Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to Thoughts on Things. Today we're going to be covering the most bulletproof approaches to studying and revising, and basically just taking notes when you're reading and trying to absorb useful bits of information. And effective study techniques like this are, are not really something that's taught to us at school very well, which is a real shame because there's a lot of inefficiency out there in different approaches. The methods I'm going to take you through today are tools that I've used when I was back in university, but more importantly, I continue to use them now when I want to learn or absorb a particular topic, especially one that's challenging to me. Finally, all of these methods have been backed up by really long-term research and studies, and there's great evidence that they're effective in a pretty remarkable way. So I really hope they help you guys out, and with that in mind, let's get into it. So first of all, we're gonna talk about how to take notes, and really this is the first step in the process, and it's probably the most important as well. A classical note taking has been proven to be really not that useful for revisions and the best method really is the Cornell note taking method which is a bit misleading in the name because the name suggests that it's a note taking method where essentially you do take notes but instead of copying down passages or bits of text what you actually do instead is write questions. And really, this is the Cornell note-taking system. So instead of taking notes during a lecture, which has proven an ineffective method, you actually write yourself questions. So the reason this works is instead of passively making notes, you're actually forcing your brain to think about the answers to the questions as you're writing them down, which helps fire up your memory retention and just really gets your brain working. And the more brain power it takes to recall a fact, the better you will retain that information in your long-term memory. I personally found this method really, really helpful when I was studying for exams at university. It's a method I continue to use now when I'm reading books, and hopefully you will as well. So that's method number one. The next step I'm gonna take you guys through is actually what you do to transition from those questions to getting this stuff into your long-term memory. And as you guys know, the world is a pretty complex place. And actually the benefit of learning new things and absorbing new content is really understanding and connecting the dots across lots of different topics. And so what you're trying to do with this step is really fire up your brain to think very cerebrally across different topic areas and trying to connect the dots. And the best way of doing that is really through spider diagrams or more commonly referred to as mind maps. But what I'd recommend that's slightly different to how you might normally do mind maps is I'd really like you to try and draw out mind maps using the active recall method. And this is really quite simple. And all this means is that you're mapping your spider diagram out after you've read a certain topic. You are not copying information across. Think of this as more of a closed book examination where you're really just trying to recall everything you can remember. I really find that good notes is a great way of doing this. I get my iPad out and I just start creating some beautiful spider diagrams. And you can get creative with colors and pens and actually I'd encourage you to do that as well because this is where you're gonna digest most of the information and where you're gonna help put this stuff into your long-term memory. Now the key thing is here, once you've gone through and tried your best to recall most of the topic, that's actually the point you can put the pencil down and then go back and reread topics or areas where you felt less comfortable with or where that recall was less good. And obviously at this point as well, you can refer back to the questions you wrote to make sure that you've answered them. And something I quite like to do is actually to write those questions down on the spider map as well so that you can see those things on there. So guys, that's the second step in the process and you should end up with a really, really pretty spider diagram at the end of it. So the final step in the process is really, to be honest, just an optional one for students. So once you've covered a topic using those first two approaches, so you've written the questions out and you've created a beautiful spider diagram, the next step is creating what we call Anki flashcards. And these flashcards are simply used to memorize specific content blocks. And this is the reason I would only really recommend this for students. This isn't something I do so much anymore now that I don't take exams, but it is a really good way of getting that short-term memory firing 
in terms of remembering specific content blocks. And they're a really good tool for remembering facts and making sure you've covered a topic broadly. The flashcards are most useful when they're used in spaced repetition. And the spaced repetition is basically where you um, space your learning out over longer periods of time. So where possible, I know it isn't always because people like to cram for exams, but Anki flashcards in particular are designed to be used over a longer period of time. So rather than cramming at the last minute, this is really the best approach and you're going to get the maximum value from this. So guys, those are my three recommended steps for how to retain more of your knowledge and how to study for exams. You can use any one of these tools ultimately and it will improve your memory retention but I'd really recommend using all three consecutively as that's where you'll see the most powerful results. So guys, thanks for watching. I'd really love to know whether there's any tools that you guys have been using recently for studying or knowledge retention that you'd recommend. So let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and remember to subscribe for more.